into it. Second uh, Corinthians, chapter six, and verse fifteen. Second <clears throat> Corinthians, chapter six, verse fifteen. <clears throat> And uh, if you can uh, handle two places, First Timothy five eight. So, <clears throat> if you're strong, get one finger in Second Corinthians six fifteen, and get the second finger in First Timothy five eight. <clears throat> Second Corinthians six fifteen and first Timothy five eight. Second Corinthians 6.15, the Bible says, And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? <clears throat> infidel uh, is a pretty strong word. Uh, if you were to be called an infidel to your face, I think you'd be pretty offended. Um, <clears throat> sounds pretty harsh. Go to 2 Timothy chapter 5. 1 Timothy chapter 5 verse 8. <clears throat> the Bible says, But if any provide not for his own, and especially for those of his own house, he hath denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. <clears throat> and what I said just a, a second ago was, <clears throat> if you were to be called an infidel, uh, to your face, you'd be uh, you'd, you'd be put back a little bit, eh? It's a pretty strong, it's a pretty harsh word. It's a religious word. It's a biblical word. And <clears throat> oftentimes, uh, I was thinking that uh, when relig when negative, I should say, uh, when when terms are used, especially describing sin and and uh, negative things. Um, it can almost sound like, you know, the worst thing that could happen to someone, or uh, it's it's the end of uh, oh life is over as we know it. it's like you know, and so what infidel means biblically, it means uh, an unbeliever, someone who doesn't believe uh, in, for example, what we're talking about here today, <clears throat> an infidel, to me is someone who doesn't believe in the Word of God. He doesn't believe that uh, God's Word is true. He doesn't believe in God. He doesn't believe in the doctrines of God's Word. <coughs> and so it's a biblical word. Um, <clears throat> it's, it's a word that God has used. And I guess if you want to take uh, God's Word and apply it in your own religion, if you were an atheist or you were... Uh, you know, believed something, um, and if I didn't believe with you, you could call me an infidel, and and by definition, be right. To you, I'm an infidel. I don't believe what you believe, <clears throat> uh, and usually the, the it goes with religious uh, belief. Um, I was talking to a lady back here before the service and <clears throat> did you know the elections are coming up uh, in Canada and uh, the elections are even coming up in the United States so there's a lot of uh, political activity going on and uh, usually when elections come uh, you find out that uh, there's a lot of infidels uh, when it comes to politics if I'm a conservative and you're a liberal, well, you may be an infidel to me. Um, <clears throat> if you're a liberal, uh, 
you know, that's just the way it goes. I mean, the lady back there was very passionate about uh, hoping that Justin Trudeau would uh, be elected. And uh, if I, you know, if, if I really cared about politics and I cared, you know, that uh, Andrew Scheer got elected, well, you know, that would cause a bit of friction between the two of us. And certainly the way she felt about Justin Trudeau, uh, she really liked him. She didn't, you know, think much of Andrew Scheer. So it's a good thing that I don't think much of politics because I probably would have gravitated to Andrew Scheer and she probably wouldn't have, uh, you know, felt too comfortable with me <clears throat> and maybe looked at me as an infidel. So, <coughs> so <clears throat> don't, the one thing about, uh, uh, hearing a word like infidel, again, it's like because of <clears throat> religion and false religion, um, you know, you hear that term and you almost think, well, if you're an infidel, there's no hope for you. But you know what? <clears throat> if you're an infidel and you don't believe the Bible, you don't believe uh, in the Word of God, there is hope for you. Because uh, infidels can go from infidels to believers, you know. Um, there's a lot of things that uh, you could not believe in and then all of a sudden believe in it. You know, somebody could teach you um, a better way to be a carpenter. Let's say you're building something and and uh, <clears throat> you're doing it one way, <coughs> and someone comes along and says, hey, there's a better way to do this. <clears throat> and you say, oh, well, yeah, I'm very interested in, in a better way. Show me the better way. And you learn the better way, and you do it. But if someone comes to you and says, uh, I have a better way of doing this, and I can show you, and you say, I don't want to know the better way. I'm happy where I am. That person might look at you and go, "What an infidel," or you know, what, or at least what an unwise person, right? You know, and uh, especially if someone's going to offer it to you for free. Now, <laughs> there's a lot of self-help courses and a lot of things to, that you can learn, but a lot of those things have a very high price tag. Uh, especially if you want to learn how to get rich quick, right? Uh, if you want to learn how to get rich quick, um, you know, from those advertisements on the radio and on the news on, and on the internet, <clears throat> usually there's a hefty fee that comes with it. Uh, young ladies and young men, be very careful about those ads that say, uh, we can teach you how to be a model or an actor or an actress. Uh, you know, just come, give us $500, and we'll, you know, you can come into our program. And usually, you know, it doesn't work out. So, <coughs> <coughs> so really, just uh, an infidel, <coughs> biblical definition of infidel is someone who doesn't believe. Um, <clears throat> in what is, is being taught. Uh, it's one thing to be an infidel. Uh, well, the, the, the reason why the word is so strong <clears throat> is because the English language is very special. God used the English language to make an impact uh, on people. And the word of God has an impact when you read it. <clears throat> and that's why... Uh, that's one of the examples or the uh, facts of the King James Bible is the English language in its purity has a, a strong infact, impact. <clears throat> and yet when you hear the word infidel, it's like, ew. you might not even know the definition, but it's like, oh, I don't like the sound of that, right? <laughs> in the past, Canadian law, uh, when two people were married um, and one wanted a divorce, infidelity would have been a just uh, reason to divorce, right? <clears throat> if the wife was unfaithful or the husband was unfaithful, one of them could go to the courts and say, I want a divorce, and the courts would actually accept that 
because it was in law at one point where that was a just reason for a divorce. <clears throat> <coughs> Nowadays, people go to the court and say, I want a divorce, and the judge says, why? Why do you want a divorce? Well, we're not compatible anymore. Okay, here's a divorce, right? <clears throat> Which is a sad, sad state. So, <coughs> there are four kinds of infidels. Uh, I'm just going to list them. Uh, I don't have immediate scripture. But, number one, sinners who love money and want recognition. That would be one reason why someone might take the position of rejecting God's word <clears throat> and not believing it, and therefore that person is an infidel. One of the reasons people reject God's word is because they love money so much <clears throat> and they want recognition. Well, you know, if you're someone who loves money and wants recognition, you're going to come pretty quick to God's word where he tells you the love of money is the root of all evil and men who uh, go after that and love money, they drown themselves with many sorrows. Okay, so <clears throat> if you love money, you probably won't like this book because this book tells you that the love of money is the root of all evil. Secondly, if you're someone who wants all the attention and loves recognition, well, you're probably going to come pretty quickly to uh, God's word in here where it says, you know what, uh, you're really nothing. I'm everything and I deserve, not me, God, and God deserves all the recognition. And I can tell you firsthand that uh, <clears throat> that problem came natural for me. You know, uh, I wanted to be the center of the crowd. I wanted to be the center of attention. And God showed me that through his word. I think I've given the uh, testimony many times where when I was coming to the Lord, I was reading Proverbs, and as Proverbs was <clears throat> showing the wickedness in man and all the different wickednesses that men can have and the evil, at first I was reading Proverbs and, and going, oh yeah, that's that person, yeah, yeah, that's that person. Every time a wicked uh, quality would come up, he'd be like, yep, that's him, or yep, that's her. But then as I kept reading it and reading it, and the, the word of God and kept believing it, I realized that, oh no, that's me. And it started where now it's like, oh, that's the way I am. Yeah. Second uh, thing is uh, infidels, they're sinners who are living uh, a filthy life, right? A sinful life, doing things that are um, against God commandments. Um, and they're living that life, and they love their immorality. They're enjoying it. And again, <clears throat> uh, that may be the case. I mean, again, that was my case. And if you're here today saved, that was your case. You know, you were an infidel before you believed. <coughs> um, the third one is a sinner who uh, lacks information. That's the A part. And so you may be an infidel, you may be an unbeliever, but it's because you, you don't have the information. And so every saved child of God uh, was in that position at what time? We're, we're all in that position, actually. Everyone starts out that way. <coughs> but God has revealed himself uh, through his word, the, 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 the written word is God's re revelation to us that points us to him, that shows us that we're lost and that we're wicked and that we're sinners. Uh, and he shows us the remedy. And that's the beautiful thing about God, our God, the God of the Bible, is you know he, no he doesn't just show us how bad we are. He shows us how bad we are, and then he gives us the, the way out, which is righteousness through Jesus Christ. <coughs> uh, I mean, I don't want to embarrass people, but the conversation I had about politics, uh, again, you know, when you get passionate about things, 
it doesn't take long for it to get into uh, spiritual things. And um, <clears throat> uh, very common with people who um, have a form of godliness, but they deny Christ. Uh, when you start getting into um, uh, good works versus faith in Christ, it's always the same uh, justification. Well, I hope that my good deeds will outweigh my bad deeds. <coughs> and so I asked the question, well, I didn't ask the question. I said, you know, if you believe in God, uh, the scriptures teach us that when you stand before God, God is not going to weigh your good deeds and weigh your bad deeds. And if your good deeds are heavier and weightier than your bad, then he's going to allow you to come to heaven. The scriptures don't teach that. But it's amazing how many people believe that God is going to judge them based on good and bad. And if the good is, is more, they get to go to heaven. Do you know anybody who's ever told you that? Uh, a lot of people say that. <coughs> And so I uh, feel a, an obligation to tell them what the scriptures teach. And the Bible teaches that in Revelation that uh, sinners, men will stand before God and be judged. And who's, whosoever is not written in the book of life will be cast into the lake of fire. And to have your name written in the book of life is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. So... <clears throat> So you could be an infidel uh, because of lack of knowledge. But the B part of that is, again, kind of like what I just touched on, is you can have lack of information, but oftentimes the problem is infidels who lack information will not search the scriptures to get the information. And it's the same as the example of the carpenter. If you're building something and someone comes along and says, I can show you a better way, it's not going to cost you anything. And you say, no, 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 I don't want that. You know, <clears throat> I mean, that's, that's, uh, that's pride. I mean, have, have, you ever, have you ever been offered something? Somebody wanted to bless you and give you something? You went, no, no. Now, you may have your reason. Uh, the Bible talks about don't accept gifts because sometimes gifts come with a price. <clears throat> if you can't trust the person who's giving you a gift, if you know they're going to turn around and, and, uh, and say, hey, I want something down the road, or hey, I gave you that, why don't you do that? Well, that wasn't a gift. And if people are offering you, you gifts like that, don't take their gifts, right? <clears throat> <clears throat> but when someone truly wants to bless you and be a blessing, you know, you should receive it. You should accept it with, with humility, right? <clears throat> so, uh, infidels lack information, and the worst part of it is they will not search the scriptures um, to be taught. And the last uh, example of an infidel would be a sinner who has been brainwashed. You know, growing up, uh, from you know youth there's a lot of different ideologies and philosophies and religions and and so many people are brainwashed they just have been taught uh, a certain way and they believe it you know and for in many cases uh, there can be a false religion uh, a false way <clears throat> that's taught by very good people you know and and so you see a good person and person's pretty good, they treat you pretty good, parents are feeding you, clothing you, treating you pretty good, well, why wouldn't you trust them, right? But the fact is, it could be a false way. And so therefore, you could be uh, indoctrinated or brainwashed into a false way. <coughs> but you know what? <clears throat> the truth of the matter is, we all have common sense. And I mean, there will always come a point in time, no matter how nice the people are who are teaching you doctrine or teaching you things of God or spiritual things, if you have any common sense, you're going to get to a point where you're going to question things. 
And you're going to get to a point where something contradicts something and you see that contradiction or you hear that contradiction, you say, that doesn't make sense. And an honest person uh, will not shy away from a contradiction, but they'll go after it and they'll be like hungry. Well, I've I got to figure this out. i got to work this out. And it's that desire for truth and a desire for God that would propel someone to find God in the Bible. <clears throat> Uh, go to John 3.20. John chapter 3 and verse 20. <clears throat> John chapter 3 verse 20. <clears throat> I'm going to give you a very simple way. Very simple way. Two verses <clears throat> that will help you Decipher between an honest and a dishonest person. Okay? The difference between an honest and a dishonest person. <clears throat> this message is going to be very simple today. Very simple. There's a lot of confusion. Um, and what inspired me to try and do a very simple, straightforward, simple message is, is the Bible, religious cults and false prophets use a lot of complicated scripture to build doctrine off of and confuse people. <clears throat> and, and, and often it's uh, for their own self-interest. The difference between an honest and dishonest person John chapter 3, verse 20. John chapter 3, verse 20. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. That's the dishonest person. Okay? <clears throat> the honest person is verse 21. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. And so <coughs> I believe that a child of God uh, became a child of God because the light shone in their heart. They saw that they were a sinner. They accepted that truth and... They followed up with God's word and found that Jesus Christ uh, is the way to have forgiveness of sins. <coughs> and so I just want to clarify something because I've had these thoughts running through my mind. And I remember when I first got saved, the pastor, he made a comment and said, listen, don't come to me confessing all your sins. I don't want to know all your sins. And I was like, oh, that's a relief, you know. Uh, the only uh, idea I had about confessing sins really in the church was the Catholic Church. I mean, I didn't get it from going to the Catholic Church, but I saw enough movies and shows uh, over my lifetime to know that in the Catholic Church, you go into a little booth and you confess your sins to a man. And so I guess as I was coming to God, uh, that was in the back of my head. And really, I was going to church uh, sort of like thinking that, oh, I, I'm going to have to confess everything to the church, you know, over time and stuff. And it was a breath of fresh air for that pastor. I said, no, 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 no. Don't confess your sins to me. Just confess them to God. And I was like, whoa, thank you. <laughs> and so with that said let, let me just let me just pull something out of this scripture <clears throat> let me pull something out of this scripture um, verse 20 let's go over it again for everyone that doeth evil hateth the light neither cometh to the light lest his deeds should be reproved but he that doeth truth cometh to the light that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. So, 
So when, when one is coming to Christ, he knows. <coughs> so so, so uh, 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 an honest person, an honest man or an honest woman, uh, it's, not, it's not that they uh, want you know, their sins and their deeds and that exposed. But I believe it's that they understand that they are sinners and one's deeds are exposed to God because God knows everything. And so uh, a righteous man, and when I say righteous, I mean a saved man, would walk through this life um, believing by faith in Jesus Christ and walking in this life and if his deeds are exposed then so be it <clears throat> I mean he's not gonna he or she's not gonna go about uh, trying to you know uh, reveal her sins and stuff and and yes Christians do sin yes Christians do things that they shouldn't do it's true they say things that they shouldn't say and uh, but I believe uh, a good man a good woman understands the fact and I'm, I'm saying like a saved person understand the fact that you know what I have baggage I have sin uh, God be merciful don't reveal you know the things in my life don't expose you know me right <clears throat> and that fear that you know God could expose you for the things that you're doing uh, is is motivation to stop but you know I believe that sometimes God is merciful to his people very merciful you know and so he doesn't uh, expose uh, things right but I wouldn't uh, tempt the Lord thy God <clears throat> so Verse 21, but he that doeth truth cometh to the light that his deeds may be made manifest that they are wrought in God. <clears throat> and go to John chapter 7. God challenges men to try his word. So, you know, if you're an, you may not be saved, but if you're an honest person and you're looking for the truth, God challenges you to try out his word, God, uh, John chapter 3, uh, sorry, John chapter 7, John chapter 7 and verse 17, John 7, 17, <clears throat> <coughs> if any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself he that speaketh of himself seeketh his own glory but he that seeketh his glory that sent him the same is true and no righteousness is in him so men were attacking Jesus and uh, blaming Jesus and, and accusing Jesus of being uh, one of those infidels that was just out for his own glory right the, uh, the list that we went through earlier they were accusing him of um, wanting recognition right and Jesus was telling them uh, if you know I came to do the will of my father right this is not my doctrine this is uh, my father's doctrine and he's challenging uh, the unbeliever hey give it a try uh, what did, what was the verse? 17. He says, If any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. So if you're an ignorant infidel <clears throat> or an ignorant unbeliever and you don't, you, you don't know, you've never tried it, well, God is saying here, try it. Read my word and see whether it's true or not. And if you heed that uh, uh, advice, you know, with an honest heart, you'll find that, hey, it does work. It is good. It is right. 
<clears throat> uh, same in John chapter 20. John chapter 20, verse 31. <clears throat> John 20, verse 31. John chapter 20 <coughs> and verse 31. <clears throat> the same idea. But these are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing ye might have life through his name. So again, there's a there's an admonition to, hey, uh, read God's word. Look, uh, some, again, someone comes and says, look, there's a better way of doing things. Or here, there's an alternative way. Uh, is that not working for you? Try this. You know what? You're getting frustrated and you're buying a pack of smokes and smoking out of frustration. Is that working for you? Hey, why don't you try God's word? God's word could take that frustration away. I know what I'm talking about because that used to be me. When I was all frustrated because of relationships and anger, uh, I'd go buy a pack of cigarettes. I'd smoke one cigarette and I'd throw it away because I didn't want to smoke. I knew it was bad. What did say to you? Huh? What did say to you? Say again. What did say to you? Smoke me more. Yeah, yeah, I know. I mean, I was a fitness guy, so I knew smoking was bad for you. But it was the anxiety and the stress uh, that would uh, I, I needed something to comfort me, so I would go out and 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 you know get that comfort in one cigarette, and then I'd be so disgusted with myself I'd throw the pack of cigarettes away, and then if it wasn't the same day, it'd be at least the next day I'd go buy a pack of cigarettes, smoke one or two, and then throw the pack away, being disgusted because I knew it was bad for me, <clears throat> but I needed something to comfort this. Uh, restless soul, this rage that was in here and here. <clears throat> and so someone came to me and said, said, hey, try the Bible. You know, I, I'm sort of like acting a little simplistic about it, but you get it, right? You got common sense, right? You know what I mean? Try God's word. See if it works. If you're an honest person, you're looking for the truth, it's going to work for you. And the evidence is out. Why do so many millions of people change by getting saved and reading God's word? I mean, you know, nobody can deny that evidence. <clears throat> There's no other religion or book in the world that has transformed people's lives. I mean, the Koran just makes uh, more religious people but there's no, have you ever heard any claims of the Quran totally changing people's lives? <clears throat> I was looking, um, <coughs> I was looking for, um, I was interested in uh, the history of all the books that were written. And I, I, was, I was Googling and I was asking questions and, and I heard a preacher uh, make the statement that the Bible is um, uh, there's been more copies printed and sold of the Bible than any book in the world even uh, to the date uh, of that preacher which I, I think was in 1994 and so I got curious and so I started googling <coughs> to find out what was the most popular book in history and I asked it in a lot of different ways the Bible never came up and I thought to myself, oh, well, either this guy's wrong or Google is set up in a way and the people who are doing this stuff uh, are not being honest, you know, or um, they're just focusing in on uh, certain books and certain things, which, which kept coming up. So I asked it in a different way, <clears throat> and I came up with a website. It was the 10 most read books in the last 50 years. <coughs> and what would you think is at the top of the list? The top 10 most read books. What's well, the Bible? Right? The Bible um, in the last 50 years um, 
3.9 billion copies. That's a lot. Now, uh, just to put it into perspective, all the books, all the, to the total number of books published in history, um, <clears throat> you know, how can it be accurately perfect? But they've estimated 129 million, 864,880. So almost 130 million books have been published in modern history. That's a lot of books. <clears throat> and out of all those books, I wish I had one of those fans. <laughs> sure, I'll take it. <coughs> this was a gift given by a Japanese uh, student that stayed with us for a while. Excuse me, I'm just sweating, I'm hot. <coughs> um, so, so the Bible is uh, the mo top, number one most read book, okay, at 3.9 billion copies. Um, anybody want to take a guess what the second place book is? Most, pop most popular, most read, second place? Any idea, want to guess? <coughs> you know what we do when we go to Costco? Before we get through and pay, we guess what the bill's going to be. <laughs> and we have a contest b between ourselves. Anybody want to guess? Um, the works of Mao Zedong, which is a what, Chinese philosopher, politician, uh, which, uh, huh? There's billions in China. <clears throat> billions in China, yeah, yeah. Well, I think the West, uh, is that communism or Marxism or just Chinese philosophy? Yeah, yeah. because in, in the West, there's a big interest in, in that, right? Um, what's the third one? The kids are going to like number three, Harry Potter. <laughs> Harry Potter. <laughs> Harry Potter. Uh, so the Bible at 3.9 billion. Uh, the works of Mao Zedong at 820 million, uh, Harry Potter 400 million. Okay, and then the fourth is Lord of the Rings, right? <clears throat> um, number five is The Alchemist, which is um, uh, 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 witchcraft, basically uh, 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 esoteric religion, right? Mystery religion and trying to turn, um, uh, trying to make gold out of stuff, right? Uh, and then uh, <clears throat> The Da Vinci Code, which was a, a popular movie 10, 20 years ago, The Da Vinci Code. Uh, and then The Twilight Saga, which is about vampires, right? <clears throat> and then uh, Gone with the Wind, for you romantic types, right? Gone with the Wind. Uh, the other one is um, Think and Grow Rich, right? <clears throat> and then the very last one is The Diary of Anne Frank. Uh, Anne Frank was a, a young German girl who uh, was Jewish and their family was um, taken to the concentration camps and according to historical records she died but she, she wrote a diary about uh, uh, what it was like uh, for her and her family in uh, the German concentration camp. So. <clears throat> That is uh, um, just to give you an idea about where the Bible stands on the world stage. And you know, it's amazing, it's amazing that with that, those facts, that if you uh, watch TV, you would never get uh, from TV that the Bible is the number one selling book ever. So things are a bit slanted, eh? I mean, if, if everything was, uh, you know, they talk about democracy in the West and everything and, you know, majority rules, it's amazing how they like to conveniently, uh, uh, you know, put under the carpet the facts of how popular the Bible are. And you know why that happens? Because for, yes, sir. Yes. Oh, that's true. That's true. Yeah. 
Oh, for sure, for sure, for sure. Yeah, they, they try to yeah they try to get rid of it and and you know who's trying to get rid of it the the list of people that we went through at the beginning infidels uh, infidels who uh, want all the recognition for themselves or for their own group right and that's why uh, as time passes you get men who love the Lord love His Word uh, churches start. And over a few generations, those churches get a lot of people, and they get bigger. And what gets sacrificed? The Word of God, right? <clears throat> because men start, you know, wanting the recognition, and they, they, you know, so forth and so forth. So, <coughs> so I'm going to uh, bring this to a conclusion. Um, Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. Just speaking about um, what Alan commented on about how um, <clears throat> those who uh, are uh, enjoying power, enjoying money. Um, in control. Uh, see, what happens is, go, go to Galatians. I was reading this this morning in Galatians. <clears throat> this is a dangerous book for men and groups of people who um, like to control people for their own benefit. Okay? Uh, Galatians. <clears throat> Galatians and I, I love I love this section of the Bible because it's so it's so free and it's so uh, uh, the whole point of it is um, you know to deliver uh, one out of bondage not just the bondage of sin but the bondage of uh, uh, religion and the bondage that men uh, can put on people. Uh, Galatians chapter 3 and verse, we'll start at verse 13. <coughs> Galatians 3 verse 13. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is every one that hangeth on a tree that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Brethren, I speak after the manner of men. Though it be but a man's covenant, yet if it be confirmed, no man disannulleth or addeth thereto. Now to Abra Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He saith not and to seeds as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. And this I say, that the covenant that was confirmed before of God in Christ, the law, which was 430 years after, cannot disannul, that it should make the promise of none effect. And this is where, this is where the stumbling block comes in. Uh, the law is taught uh, that you can be saved and made righteous by the law, but the law, the Bible says, came 430 years after the promise was made. So there was a promise made, and that promise was that those who believe in the seed and believe by faith, they are the ones that are made righteous. The law came to show us sin. <clears throat> For if the inheritance be of the law... It is no more of promise, but God gave it to Abraham by promise. So there's an inheritance, right? Our kids get an inheritance not because they keep the law, but because they're our kids, right? Wherefore then serveth the law? It was added because of transgressions till the seed should come to whom the promise was made, and it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. 
Go to verse 22. But the scripture hath concluded all under sin, that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. See, there's that, there's that way of salvation that Brother Mike is always, always uh, stressing if you only believe. It comes to them that believe, not to them that keep the law perfectly. Well, you couldn't keep the law perfectly anyway. <clears throat> but before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith which should afterwards be revealed. Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. And go down to chapter 4, verse 1. Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differeth nothing from a servant, though he be lord of all, but is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father. Even so, we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. Uh, go back to verse 26, uh, chapter 3. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. <clears throat> and by the way, you have to add some context to that because if you're unsaved, you're not a child of God. Okay? And that's where uh, cults and religions take one verse of the Bible and they create a whole church doctrine. And they might use that verse and say, hey, we're all children of God. Come on in. You're accepted. Uh, you're, everybody's accepted. But who's talking here? He's talking to all the believers. So all the believers here, ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ, there is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. If ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. And so the point of the matter is, and I'll bring this, this will be the conclusion, is <clears throat> when it comes to being saved and children of God, it's not a matter of male or female. It's not a matter of Jew or Gentile. It's a matter of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, just that one thing. And in that thing, we are all equal. And that's the thing that unites Christians, faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. So if your faith is in Jesus Christ, we're, we're in unity. And I trust that if your faith is in Jesus Christ for your salvation, you are an honest person and if you're reading the Bible and you're listening to preaching and you're seeking the truth, you're eventually going to come to the truth. <clears throat> and that's all I have for today.